This AI automation takes a single topic and turns it into a complete polished presentation deck in minutes using the best AI image generator around, Google's Nano Banana Pro. This replaces hours of manual research, writing, and design work. I'm a former art director and marketer who's worked at brands like Apple, PlayStation, and Nissan. Today, I run a six-figure AI agency and a community where I help others build and sell AI automations. In this video, I'll break down how the system works at a high level so you actually understand what's happening. More importantly, I'll teach you how the Arena framework turns this into something people will actually pay for. I'm even going to give you my two favorite strategies I've used to sell AI automations for tens of thousands of dollars. By the end of this video, you'll not only understand how the automation works, but you'll know how to find your audience and how to reach out to them to start earning money from automations today. If you want to get access to the automation already built for you, I'll leave a link in the description where you can join thousands of others learning to build and sell AI automations. So at a high level, this system is designed to take any topic like this article from ChatGPT or OpenAI announcing their new health initiative and turn it into a presentation deck that looks just like this without you having to do anything. So let's kick the system off today. And while it's generating, I'm going to walk you through a couple of the things you need to think about in order to find your first client. I thought it would be fun to try to create a presentation deck based off of Mr. B's Feastables. So I literally just searched Feastables inside of Google. It gave us this AI overview. I'm just going to go ahead and select all of this down here. Go ahead, click copy. And if we're inside of N8N, I can click execute workflow. This little form field will come up, gives us the slide topic and context. And we can literally just paste anything in here that we want the system to create our presentation on. I'm just going to paste in all of that information. I'm also going to use my voice just to give it a little bit of creative direction. The primary colors should be pink and blue. This should be generated for kids with kind of big, bold colors and text and kind of a cartoon aesthetic. I'm going to kick this off and this has begun in the background. You can see we're generating all of the content for our slides. If you want to sell these automations, there are a couple things you need to know. I call this my arena framework. It starts with the letter A, which stands for audience. So in order to sell a system like this, you need to understand who this is for and who it's not. So for this instance, we ask ourselves three questions. One, who specifically needs this? In our case, this would be founders, consultants, and internal team leads, basically anybody who might be creating presentation decks. Question number two, what are they trying to achieve? They want polished presentation decks, plain and simple. And what problem is already costing them money or time? Being able to relate your automations to money or time is one of the most impactful things that you can do. So in our case, they're spending hours writing, designing, or coordinating slides. So they're spending a lot of time creating these presentations. For any automation you build, you want to be able to fill in the blanks here. So this automation is for blank who want blank without blank. For example, this automation is for founders, consultants, and internal team leads who want polished presentation decks without spending hours writing, designing, or coordinating slides. If you have this sentence, you have your offer, you know exactly who this is for and who would be willing to pay for a system like this. This brings us to R, which is the result, the outcome it produces. If the result isn't measurable, it's not sellable. If we are living in a world where we're, you might be building AI automations and you might understand the ins and outs, but most likely your clients do not and they probably don't care. They do care about a couple of things that are very tangible to their business. One, does the automation save time? How many hours per week? Does the automation make them money? Is there an increase in their revenue? Does it reduce costs on their ad spend or the labor that it takes for them to build something? And does it increase speed or reduce the time to output? Can they create things faster? If you are able to anchor the automation to any of these things, you have a much greater chance of being able to sell it because these are terms that a business understands. So for example, for the presentation automation, we could say it saves three to six hours per deck, gives you a faster turnaround for meetings, pitches, and internal updates, and you don't have any back and forth with designers because the system does it all for you. If you want to relate this to money, we can say you can save about $300 or more per deck and you can avoid $500 to $1,000 in revisions and going back and forth with an external designer. So you can use numbers like this in your proposal when you're trying to pitch this to a client. This brings us to E, the engine or how the system actually works. I'm going to dive in and take you through this step by step. 
but for every automation, there are basically three components you need to understand. First is the input. Where are we getting our data from? Is it from a Google Sheet? Is it from Notion? Is it from YouTube, Reddit, a URL? Is it from Gmail? Is it when we get a Stripe payment? Does somebody fill out a type form? In our case, we just got our information off the internet. It's just a piece of text. And then it's your job as someone building automations to understand the processing, to understand how to build the systems that allow us to convert our input data into our output data. So do we have a structured database? Do we have posts for social media? Are we creating images or new emails? Or are we training a chat bot, right? So basically this is the structure that every single automation follows. So in our case, we have the deck maker and let's hop into N8N and I'm gonna take you through it piece by piece. So here we are inside of N8N and this is the engine behind everything. As we saw in the beginning, the user just submits the information that they want to a form. Then the system gets to work. It researches everything for them and then outputs these instructions for the AI image generator. So we can see that these are the system instructions. They're really basic. It just says you are an elite lead presentation designer. And what's so cool about automations like this is you can customize this however you want. So this just says create a clean, impactful slide deck on this topic, and then we're just bringing the information that the user gave it. Then it goes through and gives us a little bit of information about the design phase to define a minimal modern visual direction with two to three colors, clean, bold, readable text, and a visual mood. Then we have a little bit of structure for the presentation. If there's a way that you like to structure your decks, you can go ahead and update this here. We have a title slide, the problem, a couple of insights, the solution, the impact, and a conclusion. And then just some rules to follow. So remember, like I said, the three things you need to remember for automations are input, processing and output, every single node inside of N8N is designed the same. So this side over here is the input. It even says it. So we're inputting the slide topic and context. This is the processing where we're changing all the configurations to meet our needs. And then this is the output of the node where we get a general theme and all of the information for the slides, like the topic and the content of the slide itself. Now this information over here is what gets passed on to Google's Nano Banana Pro to generate all the images for our slide deck. We can see that based off of our feedback, it created the general theme of bold, playful cartoon aesthetic with vibrant pink and blue color palette to match the Feastables brand. And then from here, we just bring all of the information into Gemini Pro to generate each of the individual images in sequence. And if we want to go ahead and click into each one of these, you can see that this is the title slide that this is creating, Feastables Chocolate That Changes the World by Mr. Beast. What's so cool about this is that the system is actually researching the topic for us before it actually generates this content. And Google is so smart that it actually has context on what Feastables looks like and it just goes ahead and brings that right into here into our slides. Pretty cool. This is the second image it created just to go ahead and show you. It says the problem, kids in Cocoa Farms work instead of going to school and that is exactly the mission that Mr. Beast is trying to solve. These are the instructions that we are giving to Nano Banana Pro. We are bringing in the context here. You can see it's that bold, playful cartoon aesthetic the information for each of the individual slides, and then some design requirements on how to actually structure the slides themselves. And again, you can customize this totally for you. If you wanna get access to this workflow already built for you, just check the link in the description. From there, we are saving all of the images over to Google Drive so that they are publicly accessible so we can combine them all in one place into our PDF. So if I come over to my Google Drive folder, you can see we have some of the ChatGPT images from earlier as well as all of the Feastable images that we just created. From there, we're sending this off to a service called PDF.com. PDF.co is really cool. Right now, they're offering 10,000 credits for free, so I recommend that you go ahead and sign up. I'll leave a link in the description where you can access this. Otherwise, the pricing, it's $9 a month, so if you're creating a lot of presentations yourself, it's well worth the price. We're sending all of the images over to PDF.co. We're waiting to see if it's finished processing. We're checking to see if it's actually done and we stitched all of the images together. If it's not done, we're just looping back around to wait for another 10 seconds. And then if it is done, we're just downloading the finished file to go ahead and save that back to our Google Drive in full PDF format. Inside the community is where I really go deep on making these types of HTTP requests to APIs like pdf.co. So you really learn all of the variables that you need to check, like the job ID or how to send all the images off to the system. So if I come back into Google Drive, I can go over to finish decks and I have the Feastable deck all ready to go. Pages one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This looks beautiful. I'm pretty happy with this. So now that you understand how the system works and you know how to make a deck off of any content that you want, there's a couple more things you need to understand in order to be able to sell it. And that brings me to the letter N in our arena framework. And N stands for numbers. So why someone would actually pay for this. This is the step that almost everyone skips and it's why your audience is not buying. In order to actually get a sale, you need to anchor this to math. 
What does this mean? This means time saved by hourly revenue, direct revenue impact, how much money is this making them, or cost replacement, how much money are we saving by implementing this system? These are the terms that businesses understand. So, for example, in this case, say the company is spending $300 to $500 per deck to hire a designer to make these for us. If this company is making 20 decks a quarter, they might be spending six dollars to $10,000 per quarter to have their decks made, or $24,000 to $40,000 a year. Or one of their team members might be spending three to five hours to create one of these decks, and that's time they could be spending elsewhere. So if you were to charge something like $1,500 to $3,500 just to set this up, or even per month, you could see quickly that this is worth it to the business. That brings us to the last letter in the arena framework. This is A, this is acquisition. This is how you'd actually sell it. How would you acquire customers? How do you turn your automations into dollars? They're the core four principles. Alex Hermosi talks about these all the time. These are the four ways to sell anything. Warm outreach, cold outreach, you can post free content, you can run paid ads. In my experience, warm outreach is the best way to make sales and find your first clients. Warm outreach is basically just reaching out to people you know, people who already know, like, and trust you. These are people in your email list, people in your phone book, people that are following you on LinkedIn. Basically, anyone you know fits this category. And here is exactly what you have to say to them. It is following the ACA framework. A stands for awareness. So first, reach out to them, let them know what you're doing. Hey, insert their name, I've been building an AI system that turns a single topic into a complete presentation-ready slide deck. C, curiosity, share a quick win or result. Again, anchor this to math, something tangible. It's been helping founders and teams go from idea to a polished deck in minutes instead of spending hours writing and designing slides. If you're unsure of what to put there, again, just refer back to the letter N for these examples. And the last A stands for action. Ask them for the lowest friction next step, which is a referral, because if you don't ask, you're never going to receive. A referral basically just means ask them if they know anyone who's constantly stuck making decks for pitches, meetings, or internal updates. There are basically four possible answers that you might receive. One, the person might say, yeah, I actually do know someone. Let me introduce you. Two, they might say, yeah, I know someone. That person's me. We should talk. Three, they might say, no, I don't know anyone right now, but I'll keep you in mind. And four, they might ghost you and you'll never hear from them again. But honestly, that's totally fine. Warm outreach in general is a volume game. The more outreach you do, the more likely you are to get results. So don't let one no ruin your day. Just reach out to the next person. The second way that I like to get clients for my business is using lead magnets on LinkedIn. The rule is don't teach the automation, teach the money problem it solves. Are you sensing a theme here? Some people might find lead magnets to be cringe. All of that work saying, hey, comment this word and I'll send you a thing. It might be a little bit cringy, but honestly, it works. So there's a three-part formula that I like to use for my content that I'm going to teach you here right now. So in the beginning of your post, first, name the cost. What is this problem costing them? The example in our case, every deck takes hours to build. Two, explain the shift, so why the old way wastes money. Writing and designing slide by hand doesn't scale. You can only do so much if you're having a single team member design every single deck for you. And three, invite the call. Do you want to see if this applies to you? Again, you have to tell people which action you want them to take, otherwise they will take no action. So is it worth seeing what this automation could replace? DM me for details or comment this word and I'll send you some information. Pause the video right here and take a screenshot of this prompt. This is a great prompt that you can use inside of ChatGPT to create LinkedIn posts for you that look just like this. All you need is the JSON file or the automation workflow itself. So if you want this already built for you, just check the link in the description because once you open it up, you can just go ahead and click download, download the JSON file from N8N, come back into ChatGPT, Upload that file into ChatGPT, copy and paste this prompt in, and you have a brand new LinkedIn post all ready to go. In general, posts with images tend to perform better, so take a screenshot of the automation, attach it to your post, and hit send. Just to review what we talked about today, we talked about the ARENA framework, audience, result, engine, numbers, acquisition. We went through the deck maker automation, so I showed you how you could input content. The system researches that content for you. It creates all of the images for the deck itself. It stitches them together using pdf.co, and it saves them to Google Drive. We talked about the ACA framework, awareness, curiosity, and action. How do you actually reach out to people you know to get them to refer you to potential clients? And last, we covered the structure for a LinkedIn lead magnet and how you can use this to grow your business along with a chat GPT prompt that can help do it for you. If you want more advanced systems for building and selling automations, check the link in the description. If you want to see how I apply the arena framework to an automation that generates ads on autopilot, check this video right here. I'll see you over there.